Hello everyone and welcome to Harv's World where I am excited to be in France. That's right, we're in France, oddly enough, strangely enough, weirdly enough, we are in France. I know you're saying, Harv, um, you were just in Scandinavia, what happened bro? <laughs> well, it's a bit of a long story, I'll fill you in in a little bit, but I want to tell you about how I ended up in France, because when things go awry, Harv has to land on his feet. In Scandinavia, I ran into a gentleman, interesting gentleman, um, who was originally from, or his family, I guess, hailed originally from Scandinavia and had transplanted to France at some point in the past. If you remember our, our Viking Rollo, who ended up being, uh, well, he was given Normandy and, and made a big go of it there. Um, plenty of Scandinavians ended up in England and France and things of that nature. Anyway, that's neither here nor there, but um, this gentleman's name is Mr. Francois Swede. Mr. Swede Francois um, is a restaurateur. He, he owns a few restaurants. He's a chef. Worked his way up. And now he wants to try something new. He wants a restaurant, at least new for him. He wants a restaurant that is as close to self-sufficient as he can get it. And he's a forward-thinking guy now. He doesn't sit around and, uh, you know, say, oh, I've got to have it today or tomorrow. No, he's thinking years down the road. And his first step to building this restaurant here in Haute Bailaron, which is where we're at in France, Haute Bailaron, is to get a farm up and running that can provide him with the things he's going to need for his restaurant. No middlemen, straight from farm. I mean, you know, there might be other steps involved. I'm sure there will be. But he wants as little interference between what is grown and what he serves. So this is our farm. This is uh, where he's got us hooked up. And yes, the Fent came from Scandinavia with me. You know the Fent travels everywhere with Harv. Let's take a look and see what we've got here. So, looks like we've got a, a weeder, uh, probably a spreader there, a header trailer. We've got a small stair tractor. Looks like a Voltra. And a little bit of seed. We've got a subsoiler, cultivator, Ah, oh, looks like a forage wagon. Very nice. We've got a standard trailer. That looks like a Roland trailer. And Roland trailers are manufactured right here in France. And then we've got a handy dandy Deutz Far Harvester with a grain header on it. Outstanding. That's, that's a pretty good way to start. It's not perfect. But, you know, we are uh, we're pressed for time right now because we're getting a late start in August. And that's going to present some interesting challenges because we've got a lot of work to do to get done with, get things up and running before now and winter time. I've got a good sized standard silo, bunker silo here. And it looks like I've got a freshly harvested field here. So that's going to need prepped. I've got a field that looks like it's ready but it's really not I'm pretty sure we'll check the map in a second and then I've got a wheat field here that I'm gonna try to harvest I think because it's a little bit of money coming in and we're gonna have an awful lot of money going out right up front so we'll see what happens with that I'm not gonna put that on the priority list just at the moment I want to get to this field is the, the closest to being ready so I'm going to focus on that first. I'm going to grab my subsoiler and get started over there. And I'll tell you all about what happened with Nico and the farm in Scandinavia on the Baltic Sea. Come on, Harv. Really? I'm just not lined up well enough. Holy shnikes, Batman. There it goes. Wow. 
<laughs> okay. Let's see what we can do about this field over here. In it to win it. We don't have any time to waste here. In fact, there's so much work to do on this farm, I can tell you right now, I'm going to have to call in some help. We shall see what we can do about hiring some guys to come in, or, or girls, to come in and uh, to help us out. Because that's a lot of field. And this is a small subsoiler. I don't really want to spend the money on something bigger right now because I don't know exactly how much I'm going to have to spend to get that this, uh, this first round going over here. I'm sure you know what I mean. So anyway, Nico. What happened with Nico? Well, I gotta tell you, it's a little bit disappointing. At the same time, I'm not surprised. So if you recall, Nico is a very young man. You know, he, he's just getting um, his start in life, just getting his foot on, in, you know, get moving along. He's, he's, he's young. Kind of trying to sort out what, what his life ultimately he wants it to be. And, you know, I told you that he was impetuous and he saw his god godmother's uh, farm, Frau B, in, in Ravensburg. And he got a bug to be a farmer, take after her. Well, he didn't help out on the farm very much once I got there. Um, and frankly, that's not necessarily his fault. He got himself into some financial trouble and and was working full-time and more to make ends meet. And I was basically brought in to get that farm up and running. Now, the disappointing part is, is that one day I'm trying to get the farm you know, just doing my work, keeping things going. I think I was even planting a cornfield at the time. All of a sudden, all these trucks come rolling in. And a bunch of folks jump out. And Nico had just flat out sold the farm. He had decided that farming wasn't for him. He tried it. It, it wasn't his thing. And he was ready to move on to something different. So he had... It, and the disappointing part is, you know, he didn't come to me and say, Harv, this isn't working. Um, I need to get out of the business or anything like that. He just uh, just did it and then didn't tell me about it. Let, let these guys come rolling in and tell me about it. And, uh, well, he's young. He's got, he's got some hard lessons to learn. But, you know, nothing against him because... That's how you learn, right? That's how you uh, figure out what the world is all about. You got to try things, and sometimes they don't work out, and so you try something else. You keep trying things. Eventually, something's gonna something's gonna stick. Something's gonna jive, and life is going to be what you were hoping it would be. So that's the story with Nico. In fact, I kind of almost had to wrestle the fence away from those guys because they were convinced that it was part of the farm. And I was like, no, 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 no. I, I had to break out the title and say, look, <laughs> this is mine. It's in my name. It was never part of the farm. But when I work for somebody, I bring my tractor along. And here it is in front. This, this tractor's been all over the world all over the world and it's not going to stop anytime soon even though it's got 79.2 hours on it we are not not going to give up without a fight right Fent? that's right so our job today and tomorrow and for the next several months and potentially years is to make a go of Mr. Swede's farm I'm going to keep working on this field and we'll check back in in just a little bit. Well, I can already tell you this field is not going to produce much. I can also tell you that I am going to be really pressed for time here. I was going to try to do this run through at 15 times speed, but the size of this farm I think is probably going to make that 
unfeasible. Let's try ten times and see if that isn't more reasonable. And we have gotten through a lot of this day and not much has been accomplished. And I've already hired a helper to uh, plow that field. I knew one of the smaller tractors would handle that subsoiler. So getting somebody over there to do that work for me was going to be kind of imperative. So, uh... I called up the shop because, you know, agricultural communities, the shops always know all the farmers, every last bloody one of them, and uh, asked if they knew anybody who uh, wanted to earn some bucks today, and they sent over one Mr. Eric Kuntz. Doesn't sound like a very French name, does it? I don't care what his name is. <laughs> He's out there uh, subsoiling my field for me and hopefully doing a very good job. Lots of steps. Lots of steps involved to get these fields prepped the way I want them and ready for Mr. Swede's uh, eventual restaurant. Getting a start, anyway. Like I said, we're already pressed for time. Um, we're up against winter just to get started, so I hope it all works out. We don't have a lot of starting funds either, less than 100,000 euros to get us going, so uh, keep your fingers crossed. I mean, I have already harvested more than half of this field, and I've only got 7,000 liters of wheat off of it. Not really sure. Although I think I know what I'm going to do with this field. Because one of the things you can never go wrong with is making feed for cattle. Feed for livestock is always a good thing. And, um... It also keeps it simple stupid the kiss rule you know k-i-s-s -S, keep it simple stupid that's what we're going to try to do at least to uh, start things off we're also going to have to look into what's going on in the community around here as far as uh, additional money making op opportunities for me to bring in money for the farm working for other farmers and such. I can't pay somebody all the time. I need other people to pay me as well, but that... I got a lot of work to do before I can even think about that. I've got to finish harvesting this crop. I need to get the straw off the field. I need that guy over there to get done subsoiling that field. This field and the other harvested field need to be subsoiled also he's gonna he's gonna be getting paid well to subsoil today he's gonna be doing a lot of it rocks are gonna have to be collected everything needs lime and fertilizer everything needs lime and fertilizer yeah there's a lot to do I'm gonna be scrambling for well I don't think I'm gonna get it all done in August Keep your fingers crossed for September. September and our August and September are going to be very, very busy months. Of this, you can be sure. Oh, we actually filled up there. And I'm just blowing straw all over the planet. Okay, well, we found the limit on the, uh, the harvester, 8,500 liters. That's actually not bad. This isn't a bad harvester, to be honest. I'll take it. Unfortunately, we don't have a corn header, so that'll be something I'll have to come up with. And I'll tell you, based on how much money we have to get started, anything we don't have on the farm already is just going to have to be rented, leased. Whole lot of leasing going on. But when you're playing with seasons, 75% of the time leasing is the better option anyway. Until you've got enough money that it doesn't matter anymore. We'll see if we ever get that far. I have every intention. Every intention of getting Mr. Swede's farm up to snuff, though. Uh, let's come back around so we've got a rock-solid row. Yeah, this isn't a bad little harvester at all. No complaints. Other than whoever owned these fields before didn't take care of them. At least not the way Harv would. Well, 
At least there's no weeds. They got rid of the weeds. But there's no fertilizer on them. There's no lime, and the fields all need to be plowed. That doesn't seem like a very good farmer to me. At least they got rid of the weeds. Well, it could have been a lot worse. Got just, just under 12,000 liters of weed off that thing. I'm not even going to think about selling it right now. I don't have time to take a trip across town to try to find a, a place to buy it. So we're just going to throw this right in the silo. I want to get on that straw and get that off the field because I know I'm going to need to lease a piece of equipment and I'm going to need to use it on two fields before I can get uh, Mr. Kuntz over there subsoiling those two fields. So I need the straw off the field ASAP. Get this trailer parked up, hopefully uh, without screwing it up too badly. Oh, look at that. Uh, almost. Almost. That'll do. It's going to have to. <laughs> I couldn't go back any further. Alright, I don't know how big this forge, forge wagon is, but keep your fingers crossed that it's going to do the job in a relatively quick amount of time. That's going to be kind of important here. Time is of the essence. Alright, forge wagon. Let's grab some straw. Oh, all straw bubbling up in there all nice and neat. Look at that. Outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. We might make some headway on this farm today yet. Maybe not. I don't know. I feel like I'm going to be working into the night, though. Yeah, we'll see. Right now it's time to collect straw. Dropping another load of straw off into the silo. Got just a little bit more to pick up. Uh, Mr. Kuntz finished up for the day. Well, he finished that field over there. Did a, did a really good job, too, I have to say. Um, man, we're not going to get as much done on this first day as I thought we were going to. But the sun's not down yet, and we're farmers. You know what that means? That means we keep going. We bloody well keep going until there's no going left to go. Or whatever. <laughs> that means if we have to turn the tractor lights on to work these fields, that's what we're going to do. Get some sleep. Start back in bright and early the next morning. Almost done with this straw. Got a decent chunk off. Yeah, maybe 40, 45,000 liters or so not terribly concerned about it. Straw is not worth a whole lot of money and who knows it might come in handy in the future. We shall see. We shall definitely see. All I know is I've got three fields and none of them are ready for planting yet. Not even close. It's a sad state of affairs. Alright, sad might be a bit of an extreme. <laughs> there we go. Straw's done. Thank goodness, and then we're going to look at the shop and see what kind of equipment I can pick up to uh, keep moving forward with field prep. There we go. Alright, let's look at the shop. Now, when I've got fields freshly harvested, you know, I read the farming trade magazines. I keep up on this stuff. You can grab a mulcher. I like the idea of the mulcher, but they are not cheap. How much is the 5.8, 5.6, and 6? I like the look of the, is it Noki? Noki. Sounds like something you'd buy in a fancy restaurant. Hey, I'm going to go get me some Noki. Anyway. When you've got crop residue in your field, like we do, where I just harvested the wheat and then that other field that I started with, somebody had harvested before, it pays you to mulch in that crop residue. And it actually increases your productivity. Your harvest will increase by 5% at least a 5% increase in harvest. 
That's what that's what the trade magazines are telling me. I'm going to go with it cuz we want a fully functional, active and highly profitable farm. I don't expect that in the first year or two. We're we're going to be scrimping to make ends meet for a while, and that's okay. That is not a problem. I definitely don't need the fence for this, but it's the quickest tractor I've got at the moment, and uh, I'm pressed for time. On the plus side, these rollers work very, very quickly. Uh, the fence it's a little tight down on the ends of these fields, and uh, it was getting a little bit awkward with this small tool or these small implements, so I felt like it might be the better option to swap out into the Vulture since uh, Mr. Koontz isn't with us any longer today. But you can, you can see how it's mulching that crop residue. You can see the line of it right there. And this should boost our field by, a, by 5%, like I said. So hopefully at least I can, I can at least get one of these fields rolled today. Oh, this thing will even mulch up some grass for you. Look at that. All right, if you want to keep your grass, watch the uh, watch the mulchers. They uh, they don't work and play well with the grass line apparently. <laughs> why? Because of course they don't. That's why. Yeah, luckily this is quick. With a little bit of luck. Little bit of luck. Uh, it's going on 8 p.m. Yeah, if I keep pushing real hard, I could get both of these fields done before it's time to time to go to bed. I guess we're gonna find out one way or another. One way or another, brother. We are going to find out. And again, maybe I'm overestimating. Uh, how long this is going to take. Don't know. Don't care. All I know is I got work to do. Lots and lots of work to do. It does a good job too. Alright. Talk to you in a bit. Well, I got lucky. Very, very lucky. I've got clear skies and a nice, big, bright, full moon that you can't quite see that uh, kept things pretty well lit up for me to uh, get both these fields done. So this is the last bit of rolling on the freshly harvested wheat field. Hallelujah. It's 1030 at night. I'm pooped. It's time to get some shut-eye. Not too bad getting started for a first day. Hopefully these fields will get prepped tomorrow and planted. Fingers crossed. Big time fingers crossed. Still got a lot of work to do though. A lot, a lot of bloody work to do. Doesn't matter. This is hard we're talking about. We're going to get it done. I think that's going to do it for this first look at Hout Baileron. Getting Mr. Swede's farm set up. Hopefully, we will do him proud. Keep your fingers crossed. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. As always, I very much appreciate you coming along for the ride. And until next time, take care.